Hello everyone. In this lecture, we are going to see ASME, Section 8, Division 1, Subsection B, U, W3. Category of, Weld Joints. We have, all these courses available, on our Thinkific platform. To learn, more about these courses, register with the link given, in the description. So, the welded joint in pressure vessel are given these four categories. Okay. Now, this category is based on location, where that welded joint is located. It's not the type of joint, guys. Please remember, it's the location, which is very important to decide the category of that weld. Okay. Now let us see what are the different categories and how, you know, code has differentiated or divided these wells. Let us see. So let us talk about first category A. So category A, in very simple terms, just remember, it's the long seam. The long seams, which is the most important weld because it has circumferential stresses. So, the long seams are given category A. Very simple. Category B. Category B is the circumferential joints. You know, you see that circumferential joint. These are given category B. Okay. So, long seams category A. Sir seams category B. Then, what is category C? Any flathead or flange connected with the shell, that joint is given as category C. It's very simple. Any flathead, flange, which we are connecting like nozzle to flange joint, that is also category C. Any flathead which is coming or a flange, curved flange, which is directly connected to the shell, that also will be category C joint. Okay. Now let us see what is category D. These are the very simple things we are talking about. So, very basic. Any nozzle connected to shell. Okay. So, any nozzle or you know, any arrangement, like if we have a sum, if that is also connected with shell, that also will be category D. So, any connections which we are making, pipe directly connected, nozzle connected, or some connected, all those will be part of category D. Okay. So, pretty simple. Category A, long sim. Category B, sir sim. Category C, any flathead or flange connected to nozzle or shell. Category D is the any nozzle connected directly to the shell or a hemispherical head. Okay. Any sump connected to the shell. So these are category D joint. Okay. Now this is very simple. Term, okay. I hope everyone of uh, you have understood. Now the confusion comes where we have hemispherical head connected with a shell. What joint category that is? What is the joint category for a weld seam which is connecting a shell to a hemispherical head? What is your opinion? Samir is saying category A. Raj Shekhar also category A. Great, great, great guys. Great. And what is the reason for giving? This is a circumferential seam, right? But if we go by our normal uh, differentiation between these categories, Sarsam should come as a category B, right? But why for hemispherical head, it is given category A? What is the reason? See, let us see if uh, there is a 2 is to 1 ellipsoidal head and it is connected to a shell. What joint category you will be, give, you will be giving? For a ellipsoidal head with shell, what joint category you will be giving? So, Himanshu saying idea of shell and hemi heads are not same. It is made with crown and petal. That is okay. Even elliptical or torospherical, if they are big, they can be made in crown and petal. 
So Amul is saying tan line is not in hemi head but in shell. That is not correct, Amul. It, it's otherwise. Tan to tan line. Tan to tan line is in shell, but you're finally what we are talking about is weld line. Weld line is where? Whether weld line is in weld line is in shell or it is in D shell. Whether it is in the straight portion or it is in the curve. Weld line is in hemi head, right? See, uh, in hemispherical head or sphere, what kind of stresses we have? Whether we have both type of stresses, longitudinal and circumferential, which type of stresses we have in a hemispherical head? So Himanshu is saying circumferential. What about others? See, in shell, we have two types primarily, right? Circumferential stresses and longitudinal stresses. Circumferential stresses act in which sims? They act on longitudinal sims, right? Longitudinal stresses act on circumferential seam, right? That is pretty clear. Now I'm asking what is the type of stress in a hemisphere? Rashikar is saying longitudinal, all other are saying sir sims or circumferential stresses. So, you know, so do you remember what uh, if in terms of PD by 2T, PD by 4T, if we define what is the stress you give for hemispherical head? Do you remember how you will find the thickness for a hemisphere if we have Rashi caressing PD by 4T, right? So actually your hemispherical, do you remember that hemispherical head thickness will be almost half of what we get for shell, right? And that is where that difference on thickness comes into play when we are trying to connect a hemisphere with a shell, right? Why it's half? Because there is only longitudinal stress which is in play, okay, in both the sides. So it's only PD by 40 through which the thickness is governed, okay? Now, in terms of criticality, if you see that category A is given to the joints which are experiencing the highest stress. So, in the shell, long sims face the highest stress. Okay, so we need to make sure, and the thickness is governed by that, right? Thickness is governed by the circumferential stress, long sims. So, if I have to make sure that which sim is you know, intact. No, if I want to check a sim, I'll try to go for category A, right? Long sims. If that is ensured, sir sim will have almost half the stresses. So I'm, I may not be that much worry about that. Okay? But in hemisphere, it is governed by PD by 40. So thickness derived based on PD by 40. So now that all the sims which are there in a hemispherical head those will become the governing sims. Okay. I need to make sure that all wells is perfect. So that is the reason this connection becomes a category A. I hope you know, it is clear. When we talk about shell, okay, shell, we have two types of stresses. We have longitudinal stresses. We have circumferential stresses which one of these stresses because of which will be finding the thickness in circumferential or longitudinal stresses, which one is governing the thickness? Haseen is saying circumferential, circumferential. Okay. So that is clear, right? The circumferential stress acts upon which sim? It acts on long sim or it acts on sir sim. Long sim, right? Everybody is clear. So the long sim is governing. Okay, that is the most critical. So the most critical we have given as category A. Is it clear till that point? So in the shell, we have two types of categories. One is very critical. One is not that critical, half of that. So the critical one, we gave category A. The second one, which is circumferential, we gave category B. Now. If I have a two is to one ellipsoidal head, okay, a two is to one ellipsoidal head connected with a shell, 
what that joint category will be. I have an ellipsoidal head connected with a shell, what joint category it will be. So B, 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 right? No doubt about that because all the circumferential sims are category B. Pretty clear. Now let us talk about there is only a sphere. A sphere. Okay. In sphere, we have only one type of stress. Okay. Which is a PD by 40. Okay. Which is a longitudinal stress. Now, whether there will be two types of categories in hemisphere or sphere, because there is only one type of stress. So category also should be one, right? So if it is only one category and that well joint is deciding the thickness, right? Like it was in the case of shell when category A was the what joint efficiency you give for category A that decides the thickness, right? Similarly for shell for a hemisphere, whatever joint efficiency you give for that same, you know, which is a category, whatever category it is, you know, it will be only one category, but that will decide the thickness. So that is critical, right? For a hemisphere or a sphere making sense because only one type of joint is there. So that definitely that is the critical, all the joints are same. So criticality wise, all are the important. So we will give category A to the all long sims or sir sims which are coming in a spherical head or a sphere that will be given category A joint. Now, see, we understood that all the categories in a sphere will be category A because all are same finally. And those are the governing thickness. Okay, The thickness will be decided based on those sims. Now, what about if I have an ellipsoidal head and there is sim in that, a sim like this, not a sim which is connecting descent to shell, okay? A sim which is connecting, which is there, you know, maybe we have made that two is to one ellipsoidal head also in terms of petals, okay? Crown and petal. So if there is a, any sim coming in that descent, what category that will be? Samir is saying A. What about Haseen is also saying A. Category A. Great. So any weld which is coming in a descent, that is a category A weld. So we are talking about the sims which are coming in forms of crown to petal connections or petal to petal connections that will be category A wells. Okay. See, whenever there is a mix, okay, whenever there is a mix of direction where we cannot surely say that whether there will be longitudinal stresses coming on that same or it may be mix of longitudinal and circumferential. So for example, what if I have a spiral weld in the shell? If I have ma if I made this vessel with spiral joint, what category I'll be giving? So Carito is saying category A, A, A. Someone is saying B also, A, A. Most of you are saying A, right? So now again here also it, it becomes a problematic, right? So see how code refers. If it is clear circumferential, we know that only longitudinal stress will be coming, which is half of the circumference. So it is given a category V. Let us say not that critical. Okay. Clear cut long sims, which have circumferential stresses. Those are given category A because that will be the highest stress taking sims. These kind of sims where it is partially, it's moving in both the direction. It is also moving in circumferential and also in long, uh, in longitudinal direction. So it will be seeing a stress, which is maybe in between, but we don't have any formula for that. 
Okay. So what code has said, code has simplified it for us. So if it is mixed, just go to the highest category. So now it will become because we are not able to decide whether category B because it looks somewhere in between. So it will be given as category A. Okay. Same thing happens patient also. It will be really difficult for you if there is a decision to say whether it is a long sim or sir sim. Right. Because long sim and sir sims are clearly defined in shell, not in decision. So what joint type you will give for crown to petal? Okay. Petal to petal. All are difficult to give. So what category I'll be giving then? I'll have to give the highest category, right? So that will be given category A. So I hope you know, this will category you will not get confused anytime. So in the start, keep it very simple to remember because many times we forget, you know, um, by getting confused with this, these exceptions which we are we discussed in the last. Okay? So keep it very simple for a shell. All the long sims will be category A because those are the critical. Any sir sim will become category B. Any nozzle to flange joint or nozzle to a flat head or a shell to flat head, all those joints will become category C. Any nozzle or connections happening with a shell, nozzle to shell joint. That will become category D.